glory to God. I'll tell you what, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. You know, um, I so appreciate the gift of praise and worship. Because to me, that's the place that sets the stage for ministry. They, they usher in the presence of God. And so that team, thank you. That was beautiful. That was beautiful and that blessed me. I could have stayed there. I'd have been happy to stay there and let's just push into God. And I would have been good. I would have been good. But you know what? I'm really excited about being here. Um, most of you know my husband because they, they blessed him to come here um, uh, lots of times. So most of you know him. I've come a couple times. I've got to come with... Lynn did her conference with you guys that one time, and I brought a group, and we were so blessed to be here. It is my honor and my privilege to be here. I love your pastors. I adore your pastors, and I, I think there's no greater pastors in the world than these two, and I love their heart. I love their heart for the community. I love how they love Chip and I. You know, they take us in even though we're almost 60 years old. So <laughs> they don't mind. They don't mind that we're a little bit older than them. They like to hang with us anyways. So it's, it's a blessing and an honor to be here. Plus, this church, I have followed you. I'm going to grab a Kleenex because the praise and worship made me cry. Um, I'm going to, um, what you guys do in this community and the difference you make, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Keep doing what you're doing because that's what we're here for. But I'm so thankful to be here. So thankful to bring you the word of God. I, I went to the Lord. You know, every service, Brother Hagan has a book. It's called Plans, Purposes, and Pursuits. So every meeting for us is what is God's plan? What is God's purpose? And then we pursue that. And so I went to the Lord and I said, what do you want for these ladies? What do you want for them? Because I have a great message of, on prayer, on going deeper into prayer and the things of God and, and opening that door and in God inside of you. Oh, I love that. I love that. But that's not what the Lord wanted. You know, and then I had another idea, and I had another idea, and that's not what the Lord wanted. But he started talking to me about something that he's been telling me personally that has become my theme for life in the last couple of months. And so I thought, Lord, this is the direction you want to go, so I believe these ladies are going to be blessed. So before we begin, I'm going to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for the opportunity to bring your word. I thank you for every woman in this room. I thank you for the blessing that they are to the body of Christ. I thank you that they're vital. And we've come to a time in life that their position is vital. And I thank you for them, Father. I thank you for the words that go forth, that they are your words. They are your plans. And they're your purpose, and we will pursue them today. Father, open their hearts. Open their eyes. Father, you have a special word for each one in here, each one upon their heart, Father. And we thank you, Father, for it in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. I have three uh, words I want you to remember. The first word is history. I will test you on this. No, just kidding. The first word is history. The second word is puzzle. And the third word is stay. What in the world? Does that have to do with anything? Hold on. The first word is history. The second word is puzzle. And the third word is stay. One of my husband's favorite uh, messages, he loves anything to do with David. David and Goliath. He, I think when he gets to heaven, he's going to chest bump David. I know he is. I know it's going to be God, Jesus, and then where's David? I know that. We, he so much preaches about David. If you've known him for a while, you're going to hear it again. You're probably going to hear it this Sunday about David. That's him. He loves the, uh, the tenacity, the, the covenant-mindedness of David. He loves that. And so somebody bought us this nice statue, and it sets in the front of our, and it's David and Goliath. But that's, but you know, when you think of David, you think of David's beginning. When you think of when you start to hear about David, what do you hear about David? You hear about this little shepherd boy, right? You hear about this guy that's on a hill watching over the sheep. 
who seems to be a nobody. Who seems to be, oh, what, he's got all these brothers. Remember when the prophet came to anoint him? And there's, oh, this one must be the one. You know, what? because they, they must have been, oh, look at me, look at me, look at me. All the women must have been after them. But David was out with the sheep. Seemed to be nobody. Who's he? Who cares? Doesn't matter. As they went down through the list, well, we've got one more. This is my paraphrasing. But they, but they didn't even bother to bring him in with all the others. Seems to be a nobody. Who am I? Who am I? But you know what? The thing about David is that didn't matter. David didn't mind that he was on guarding the sheep. What did David use that moment? You know, sometimes in life as people, as women, we think, who am I? What is my purpose? Why am I here? What's the calling upon my life? David could have thought the same thing. And then the enemy goes, yes, what is your calling? What is your life? You mean nothing, right? The enemy could have done the same to David. But what did David do during that time? He chose to worship and praise God. He chose to learn about the covenant of God. He chose to press into God at that time. And so then when it came time to anoint, God knew exactly who. That person just seemed, seemed to be that, who is he? Who is he? Who am I? I'm a nobody. Why would you want me? I guard the sheep. Well, then you go on down the course and you see this person that I call, who am I guy? Ever felt like that? Who am I? That Then you see as you go along the course, his brothers go off to war. Very pivotal time in the covenant life of Israel. These brothers go off to war. You know the whole story of David and Goliath. I'm not going to go into it. But the key part that he's, I'm going to share with you is the word that the Lord has placed on my heart in the last several months. And it's how I live every day of my life now. But you see that the brothers go off to war. His father says, go, go check in on your brothers. Take them a ham and cheese sandwich and go check in on them, right? And here he goes, and he gets there. And you know the whole story. You know the whole scene. And he's sitting there watching all these people that have the same covenant with God hide behind the bushes. What about you? Do you have a covenant with God? Are you covenant people? Are you saved in this room? Yeah. Then you have a covenant with God. Right. You are in the same place that David. Who am I? But I have a covenant with God. Right? right? This is that place he's in. And so here comes this little shepherd boy that probably smells like sheep. But knows who he is in God. Do you know who you are in God? If you're not for sure, there's a wonderful thing called the Bible. And it tells you who you are in God. But he comes up to this scene, and all of this is going on. I'm not going to go into that story. And he makes this statement in 1 Samuel 17. And it says, and David said, because his brothers go, what? you know, you know brothers, boys. You know brothers. What are you doing here? What are you trying to prove? You know, what are you doing? What's going on? They started berating him. And he goes, and David said, what have I now done? Like brothers do. Oh, come on. What have I now done? What's the big deal? I'm bringing you a cheese sandwich, you know. What have I now done? This is the line that has become the theme of my life now. Is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? And then he goes on to say in the next verse, and he turned from him towards the other. So he turns from his brothers and turns to the others, and he spake after the same manner, meaning he said once again, is there not a cause? I love this. I love this statement. Everybody say that what with me. Is there not a cause? Yes, there is a cause. I love that statement because it brings us into the reality of our life, your life. 
where you live, whether you're in Alma, Arkansas, or you're in Branson, Missouri, or you're in Tulsa, Oklahoma, wherever you live, there is a cause and a purpose for your life. You're not just floating around here as a nobody. Who am I? You are floating around here for a purpose and a plan of God. And I don't care what the enemy has told you. It's a lie. You are here for a plan and a purpose. One time the Lord told us in prayers, he, in the prayer room, he said, he said, my people spend most of their time waiting on the big supernatural. And they miss all the little things of me that lead to the big supernatural. We miss a lot of things in life where we make a difference in God. Thank God David didn't go, who am I? I'm just a shepherd boy. Thank God David stepped into his covenant and said, is there not a cause? When you go out into the community, when you do this thing for Thanksgiving, you should be stepping in there with those people going, is there not a cause here right now? Is there not a purpose that I'm going to change a life right now? But, you know, I love the study of words. I geek out when it comes to the study of works. I'll get in my books and I'll have my Strong's and I'll have the Greek and I'll have the Hebrew. And I'm looking them up and I'm going down to the very core of what they were saying at that moment in time. So the very core of that word cause, the very core of the Hebrew word is if God had spoke it himself would be this. Is there not history to be written? Is there not a cause? Is there not history to be written? Now, in the Bible, in Psalms 139, it talks about everyone in this room has a book. Your name is written in the book, but you also have a book. And it says, in, my, in that book are your members, meaning you, about you. So in heaven, let's just go there. Think about this. In heaven... Your name's been written in the book in Jesus' blood. But also in heaven, there's your own personal book in heaven. Your own personal with your name on it. In, uh, in my time in heaven, if you've ever read that book, that gentleman went to heaven. He, he said Jesus showed him his book. And his book had his name on the front of the book. That was his book. You have a book in heaven. And on the front of my book, I want my name, Candace Renee Brim. But I've told God, I want, is there not a cause underneath it? Is there not a cause? Is there not history for me to be making right now? Oh, but Candace, we're not George Washington or Abraham Lincoln. But you have a cause. You have a book. If you weren't important to God... And the plan and the purpose of him, then you would not have a book. And your name wouldn't be written in heaven. So I look at it like this now that I've been on this course. Everything I choose to do for God and his plan and his purpose, in my book he's writing. And in that one book it talks about the angels that write in your books the things you do for God. Yay! Hey, you know what? You lean over out of love and pat somebody on the back. That's in your book. We forget, remember the little things make a difference. The little things. Saying hi to somebody in Walmart. And they may be having a crummy day. But you make the difference that day. Wherever you go, whatever you do, you should be saying to yourself, is there not a cause? Can I not write history? You know, this, this event you're doing, you have the opportunity to write history in somebody's life. Somebody that has been in, done no mama, daddy, none of that situation, but you have an opportunity to make a difference in their lives. You have that moment. You have that time. Is there not a cause? Is there not history to be written? And, and like I said, that has now become. So me, for me, when I get up in the morning, I go, what's my cause today? Is there not a cause? Is there not history that I'm going to write today? 
oh, so what big history did you write today? Well, I'm here. That's, that's a cause for God. What if you just took a friend out for lunch? That's history being written, right? What if you called somebody because the Holy Spirit led you to do, and they said, you have no idea how much I needed this today. You wrote history in heaven. You're writing history in heaven with the things you do. Don't, don't get focused on the big things. Focus on the little things. And do those little things, and they're going to create the big things in God. And then we're going to get in heaven, and we're going to open our book, and we're going to go, wow, you, you noticed that, Lord? You notice when I put that shopping cart up for that, old, that little old man and woman? You notice that? And that was history to you? That was a cause to you? Now, to David, this was a big cause. I mean, he was taking down Goliath. Well, how many in your life have situations that seem like Goliath, that seem big, that seem big in your friends' lives? What can you do? What is your cause? What is the history that you can write that you can support them, that you can encourage them, that you can pull them through things in life and make the same difference? Yes, David changed the nation, but can you change your life and the friends around you, your, their life? By your purpose, by realizing that what you do does make history in the kingdom of God? You have many causes. Today is a day of cause. Today is a day of making history and life. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now, the, the next thing I wanted to share with you, remember I said puzzle. Psalms 139, 14, and the voice says, I will offer you my grateful heart, for I am your unique creation, filled with wonder and awe. You have approached even the smallest details with excellence. Your works are wonderful. I carry this knowledge deep within my soul. See, I love this verse because this talks about you. This talks about you are a unique creation. You are a wonder in all. You are, you, God has you in mind with the smallest of details. You know, one of my, I, I don't have a Facebook I don't have a Twitter. I don't have any of that stuff. Because I watched my daughter go through, oh, with that. Because our society likes to tell us what our flaws are. Oh, at, at my age, you should look like her. I mean, it affects our age. It's not just the young girl. It affects everybody. We're constantly being told by the media how we should look, how we should act, whether we should be vaccinated, whether we should not, whether, the, you know what I'm saying? Constantly as women being compared to every other woman, right? But what does the word of God say? You are uniquely created to every detail. Every facet, the cause that you have in life, the history that you make is determined by how God created you and where he placed you and where he wants you. You are in Alma or the town you're in for a purpose and a reason. And I know here at your church, they've talked to you about taking your seat. You're there for a purpose and a reason to pray over that community. To make a difference in that community. If you don't even step out into Walmart, but you pray every day over your community, you make a difference. Right? Right? But you are uniquely made. You are uniquely made. At this, I wanted to give this to you because to me, in God, this is how we are. God has created this massive puzzle. Massive puzzle. Huge puzzle. But every puzzle has puzzle pieces, right? And every one of us is one of those pieces. So if, for example, I have a puzzle piece in here. Here's a puzzle piece. But that puzzle piece alone does nothing. But when you put the puzzle pieces together, then you have a picture like this, right? So every one of you are uniquely made. You look at that puzzle. If I, she gives me one of these pieces here. Look, 
These two don't look the same. They're not even going to act the same. They don't even hold the same position. But they're vital to this puzzle. Just as you are vital to the body of Christ. Now, I can't stick this piece in this guy's position. Right? And you can't stick this piece in that guy's position. In fact, this piece is not going to go. The puzzle's not going to go unless you put the pieces in the right positions. Your own place. Your own calling. Is there not a cause for you to be in your place, in your position? And so... Um, so this is you. You are uniquely, you are wonderfully, you are purposely made by God for the purpose of a cause. And th this is you. You can't take over somebody else's position. You can't try to get in there. You fit where God has placed you, right? You're, you're called to this church, right? Well, then make a difference in this church. Fit yourself right in where your puzzle piece goes and make a difference in this church. In Ephesians 2.10, it says, for we are his workmanship. When you look at that word and you take that word to the core, that talks about God being this painter. And he beautifully created you. Exactly the way you look, exactly the way you look, exactly the way you feel. He created you with your emotions. He created you with your mind. He created you to be who you are for the purpose of, I have a cause. I have history to be written. And it goes on to say in Ephesians 2.10, created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. See, God just wants you to realize that you are that puzzle piece that he created for his purpose, his plan, and you are to pursue that as your own self. Not anybody else, not anything else, but just exactly who God made you to be in that place, in that position. So I'm going to ask them to give you a puzzle piece Keep this in your purse. Every time the enemy wants to tell you, you, who am I? You are not worthy. You are not this. You are not that. You pull out that puzzle piece and you say, uh-uh, uh-uh. I'm created in his image for good works for him, and I have a cause. So enemy, you know what I do? I tell him to shut up. I know that's pretty strong. I know that's pretty strong, but sometimes he roars so loudly in our life, in our ears, in our family, even your friends. They don't know any better. It's the enemy. It's the enemy. But you pull that piece out, and you throw it right back in the enemy's face, and you go, yeah, I have a square side there. So what? I'm beautifully I'm wonderfully created, and I'm going to fit right in there with God and the rest of the people of his family. Right? And then you know what's great about these puzzle pieces is this piece is going to connect to another piece. And it's going to connect to another piece. And it's going to connect to another piece. And, it's gonna connect. and then all of a sudden, you're connecting to each other. And that cause that God has... That place, that history he wants you to make, you begin to start making that history together. Because this piece right here, they may become your best friend. And you start creating history together for God. You right? So you start working and you work your way out. And then this piece, and you eventually you notice you're connected at some point to a lot of different pieces because you're connected this piece and that piece is connected this piece. You see that? That's God's design. That's, right. That's God's place. You were created beautifully in his image for his purpose, for a cause. Right? Glory to God. Glory to God. So we said we have a history. We are a puzzle piece. And then I said stay. This is the vital part to this. It's uh, this quote I love. To be a man or woman of God, you must resolve to stand against the tide. You must resolve to stand against the tide. You must resolve that, yes, this is me. 
I am a very vital piece in the kingdom of God. I have a cause and a purpose. I call it go the distance, stay the course. Once you realize I have a cause, I have a purpose, I have history to be written in my book. You may be a mama of five, but you have history to be written. You are that port in peace. You may be a mama that's home with babies, but you are vital to the kingdom of God. You may be a teacher in the school, but you are vital to the kingdom of God. You may be a doctor, a lawyer, whatever God calls you to be. You are vital to that place. But you have to go the distance. You have to stay strong in who God created you to be. Not trying to be anybody else. Not trying to be that other puzzle piece. Be you and do what God's called you to do. It's, it seems simple, right? But really, it's, it's a lot harder. Because the world wants us to compare everything and everybody. Oh, look at them. Look what they're doing. I'm just, I'm just a mom at home. Oh, but you're vital. You're creating the next future. You're creating what could be the next George Washington. You're vital. Glory to God. So let's go to 1 Timothy 6, 11 through 12. And we're going to begin with the King James Version. But thou, O man of God, or woman of God, flee these things. Follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed the good profession before many witnesses. This is the way I like to look at this. You, fo- you flee, you follow, you fight, and you take hold. Everybody say that with me. Flee, follow, fight, and take hold. What do we flee from? We flee from evil. What is, e- what is evil? Well, everybody has their list. But those thoughts that, that you step into as women, that you start comparing yourself to somebody else, or you start, you know, who am I? You need to flee from those. Where do you go? To God and who you are in him. Get your puzzle piece out. I'm beautifully, wonderfully created. Don't mess with me, enemy. Don't mess with me in my mind. I tell them, all, not my house, not today. Not my house, you're not coming here. Where's my house, my home or my mind? The biggest battleground, I love Joyce Meyer's book, The Battleground of the Mind. So true, so true. The biggest place, but flee, follow. Who do we follow? We follow God. We follow his voice. We follow his plan. We follow his purpose. What is your plan, your purpose for life in him? Whatever that is. We flee, we follow. What's the next one I told you? Fight. fight. Yes, the good fight of faith. You're going to have to fight. Women, it's okay to fight. Not with the husband. Uh, we just, I just talked to that sweetheart over there. You can tell the truth in love with the husband. It's okay to communicate. You must communicate. In fact, I, I, I tell you to over-communicate, but communicate in love, right? No, your fight is against the enemy. Your fight is against the thoughts. The fight is, is the same place that David could have been. Who am I? Who am I? What, what am I going to do? How do I make a difference? I'm just here. That's the fight. That fight. I don't care how old you are either. Your race is not over. Your race is not done. I'm pushing closer to 60. I've just begun. Watch out, enemy. I've got things to do and you're in my way. Come on. Come on, girls. Come on. Let's get a little bold. Let's get a, well, it doesn't matter what he says. It's what you say about your life. And if you get this now, little sweetheart, you're going to change the world. You will change the world. Be who God created you to be. Fight. Fight for that place and take hold of the promises of God. Take hold of who. That's what David did. 
He take, took hold of his covenant rights in God. What does the godly covenant say? That you're his and he is yours, right? Whatever he has, you have. It's a, that's an exchange. That's who you are in God, who you are in Christ, who you want to be. Now, the, the, the problem is there's all these places and he's going, here, sweetheart, take them, take them, take them. And we don't feel we're worthy. We don't feel we deserve. We feel like we have to earn them. We feel like we have to. But he's going, no, take these. This is who you are in me. Now take them for you have a cause. You have a purpose. You have a mission. You have a history to write. You have things to do. You have a phone call that needs to be made to so-and-so because she's in a bad place right now. Right now, write the history. Write the history. Change a moment. Change a moment. We have to change a moment in life. The passion of 1 Timothy 6, 11 through 12 says, Timothy, you are God's man, so run from all the errors. There's going to be things in life we make mistakes. Lord, help me. Y'all come up here and lay hands on me. I make mistakes. We make mistakes, but we run from those errors. We repent and run. And it says, instead, chase after true holiness, justice, faithfulness, love, hope, and tender humility. It tells you exactly what to chase after. And then he says, so fight with faith for the winner's prize. Lay your hands upon eternal life to which you were called and about which you were made. The good confession before a multitude of witnesses. I like how the message says, run hard and fast in faith. Seize. Seize. That goes back. Now let's go back to, the, to what David said. Is there not a cause? Seizing these moments in life going, Father, there is a cause. There is history. And I'm going to write it. And I'm going to... I'll stop with this last verse here, but but as for you, O man of God, this is the amplified, flee from things that that things that aim at and pursue righteousness, right standing with God, and true goodness, godliness, which is the loving fear of God and being Christ-like, faith, love, steadfastness, patience, and gentleness of heart. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were summoned and for which you confessed the good confession of faith to be. Glory to God. That's you. Glory to God. Now let's go back to those three words. History. Is there not a cause? Right now I want you to stop and think. What is something in your life right now? What is something that God has placed on your heart? I don't care if it's a little thing. Like, you know, I kind of got up this morning. I felt led to go by and get Sally some flowers. I felt led to do this. The little things. I felt felt led to clean so-and-so's house. Uh, Whatever it is. What is that cause? What is that history that you're going to write in Life today, today, not tomorrow, not the next day. Oh, oh, we women, we love this one, or maybe I do. I'm going to start that diet next week because I'm going to pig out today and tomorrow and tomorrow. And then I'll start it next week, right? How many? Oh, Monday's a good day. Monday's a good day to start the diet. I just pig out all weekend, Right? Okay, well, we do the same thing in our Christian walk. You know, I heard, that, I heard this message, and, and man, I, 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 that really registered with me. I have a cause. I have a purpose. I have history to write, but I think I'll start that next week. Oh, oh, the Lord's extra time in his word. I think I'll start that next month. I'm going to start the month of November, Thanksgiving month. I'll be thankful for the word, and I'll start it next month, the extra time, right? Thankfulness for the word month. We'll start it then. No, 
today, today. David said today. He didn't say, oh, let's wait for Goliath to yell 50 million more times. He said, right now, is there not a cause or history to be made? And then number two, you are that vital puzzle piece. You are, even with your square sides, your rounded sides, got a little rounded right here that I need to get rid of rounded, but you know what I mean? Even with all who we are, you're that perfect piece that's created for such a time as this. And lastly, you have to stay strong. You have to go the distance. You have to stay in there. Because if you choose not to stay in there, then who's, who's, who's going to do it? You are that vital. Think about all the people that are around you. Think about your family. I have family members in my family. Most of my family is saved, but I have a few cousins that are not saved. Well, what if I don't choose to be the cause that day? What if I choose to set in this, oh, I'm nobody. I'm not a puzzle piece in God. I'm not anything. What if I choose to do that and I don't reach out to my cousins? And nobody else does. And then we, we go to heaven on that great day. And I, we have to stand there and watch them be turned away. See, you're that peace in their life. You're that position in people's lives. God placed you in a neighborhood, placed you in a school district, girls, placed you in a place that you make a difference to those pieces, the rest of the puzzle pieces around you. You make the difference. You're the cause. You're the history. And you're perfectly made to do it. Even with the curves and the sides and the edges that you don't necessarily like. But God loves them. God created it. We have to love what he created and step out. Because you have to go the distance. And going that distance, you have to go stay strong. Because if you give up, if I give up on my cousins and there's nobody else, nobody else, then where are they going to be? Where's their eternity at? Hell? Do we want to stand there and watch it? Jesse Duplantis tells in his book when he, when he visited God, he said God told him that the greatest day or the saddest day to him was not the day that Jesus went to the cross. To God, that was glorious. Because he walked all through life as that puzzle piece without sin, without guilt, without shame to save us, right? He had a cause. He wrote history. He was that puzzle piece. And he made the difference, right? Just like we are. But if he had not done that, we couldn't be here. But he told Jesse, he said, that's not my saddest day. My saddest day is when people come to heaven and I have to turn them away and I say, I never knew you. How are they going to know him? Because you're the puzzle piece right next to them. You're the piece. You're, you're the headlight. They're the little piece down there. You're the piece that makes the difference. You're the piece that reaches out to them. Uh, with my cousins, I, it's not a place where I can go, you need to get saved. They'll go hit the door running. Like, we know you're a pastor, but we're not listening to you. But my piece is I love them. I love them beyond measure. I love them until they're open to receive. And that's where you hold that place is that little headlight and that bike on that puzzle. Where you hold that place with a cause, with a purpose, with history to be written. And you stay strong and you go the distance just like, and you hold on to that thing in God. Hold on to who you are individually made. Don't change who you are in God. Just know him better. I wrote down here, let me see. Who he is in me is how I become who he wants me to be. Who he is in me 
is how I change, how I make a difference, who he is. So we work on who he is in us, and then we make a difference as that peace, right? Glory to God. So go back to those three things. You are a history maker. You are the history maker in God's kingdom. He's writing right now, right now. You're in your book right now. He's going, hey, and then he came to beyond women's, what is this, flourish meeting? And yeah, you are that. You are a puzzle piece, and you will stay strong. Father, I thank you for every woman in this room. I thank you for this moment in time. Lord, we're just going to wait here. We're going to wait, Lord. We're not in a hurry in life. Because we want to hear your voice. We want to be that history maker in you. Lord, we want to be a complete whole puzzle piece in you. Lord, we look unto you in our life. For you are valuable in me. You are much more valuable than you see. You are valuable in my eyes, to my plan, to my ways. You are valuable. Just step out. Just step out. Just step out. Turn those things to me. Lay those aside. Don't pick them up again. For they are not the naramasho. They are not the course I have for you. They are not the plan. But press into me. Press into that path. Press into that purpose. And I will pull you through. Oh, there's someone in here. Oh, Rashika Mira. There's someone in here that feels oh pekele to so. Like you've been pressed up against the door. That you can't go any further. But he's pulling you through. He's pulling you through. Grab a hold of him. Lay hold. Lay hold of him. Lay hold of him right now. Lay hold of him right now. And he's going to pull you through. No, that's under the past. I applied the blood of Jesus over that. I applied the blood of Jesus over that thought right now. That is in the past. You will not operate in the past anymore. I apply the blood over that and you move forward. Father, in the name of Jesus, let them move forward. See, I'm pulling you through. Pulling you through. Hallelujah. He's pulling you through. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you, Lord, that as these women, oh, understand that they're vital in you, Lord. They're vital to the cause of you. Our cause is you. Our cause is to be the witness of you, Lord. We will write the history in our area as witnesses unto you, Father, and change lives. And make a difference. Father, I bind the spirit of who am I. I bind the spirit of inadequacy. I bind that spirit off of them. And I loose the spirit of peace. And joy. And love. Father, that their lives will not be changed. By the enemy's plan. But by your plan. By your purpose. Lord, and I thank you. I thank you for today. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your purpose. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, we praise you. We thank you. We give you the glory and honor and praise. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I challenge you today, right now at this time. I'm not going to make you stand up. I'm not going to make you raise your hand. I'm not going to embarrass you. 
But I challenge you right now today to say, I am that person. I can make the difference. I will. Just say, I will. I will, Lord. I'll follow you the distance. I'll go as far as you want me to go. I'll be who you want me to be. And I will change the history around me. I will change those around me. In Jesus, for you, Father, for you. What, look at everything he's done for us. Why not for him? Why not you? Why not you? Why not you? Why not me? Right? I mean, here we are now in Oklahoma. What are we going to do? A lot. A lot. <laughs> A lot, right? A lot. A lot. Did Romambe don't rosso ayamid romind romasaro. Did a Roma shikeletro. Galeria montra shikoro. Oh, Sia. Thank you. Let her see. Oh, Lia Mishro. Well, 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 well pleased. Well, please, well, please, let her see that. Lord, I thank you, Lord. Oh, oh, I hear the hear in the Spirit. He's separating you unto him for another purpose, another plan, another place, another position. Oh, no, no, everybody, I heard this in the Spirit. No, she's not going anywhere. <laughs> this is a spiritual plan. This is a spiritual place. This is a spiritual place. Opening a door. Opening a place. Oh, oh, another place, another room. Another room, another prayer, another path, another vocal. Oh, and you're going to expand. And as you expand, you're going to, all oh, those all around you. Oh, they're going to grow. They're going to expand with you. Just walk through that. Walk through that door. Walk through that. Oh, he's gently pulling you through there. Walk through that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do this. I'm strengthening you. I'm empowering you. I'm placing you there. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, and everything will be fine. Everything will be fine. Children will be fine. Everything. Lord, I can throw now strengthen her, Lord, as a leader, this leader. Empower her, Lord. We thank you, Father, for the position and the plan and the purpose you have for her and this congregation. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, 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 amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Kili timbi potrosimiko, yes, yes, yes. Kele otromesefe komafo. Is this okay? Dele mi 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 ni no roma, bonde yamun. Let that nuna leon. Let that wash. Yes. Silence. Silence that. Silence that. Silence that. Nakote iti tunun. Pressing it. Pressing into the moon. Pressing into him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Today's a new day. Today's a new day. Those things. Silence. No, 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 no. You're wanting to go. Yes, you do. You're wanting to be in, but then you feel caught taking you to that another place. And another moon. Because you're going to do, you're going to let that go. 
Kata lah, kumusu. Kata eh, sokobako. Now, Father, thank you. No, 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 no. Just show her that, show her that. Let her see that on her own, in her spirit, in her spirit right now. Right now, that's it, Lord. That's it. There it is. There it is in the spirit. Now take that. Take that and go. That's him. That's him. You feel that? You know him? There he is. That's him. Now, now his presence. Father, I thank you that you envelop her in your presence. From this day forward. From this day forward, Lord. Strengthen her. From this day forward, just Enrique Coso. There it is. Oh, he said, I love you. I love you. I love you just the way you are. You caught this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Now your peace. There it is. Receive that. Washing over you. Now hold tight to that. Pursue that. Stay in there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for what you've imparted to her today. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' own name. Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Let's just close in prayer. Father, we just thank you so much just for your presence and your words to us. And we just choose um, with what you ministered to us today, Lord, to not just be hearers, but to be doers. We thank you that the Holy Spirit is there to show us, Lord. Yes. To show us those opportunities to just be your light, to be a witness, to make history, Father. Thank you, Lord. We do. We surrender to your will. And we thank you, Lord. We are here for a purpose, and we will fulfill our purpose. Just say that. I will fulfill my purpose. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Can we give Pastor Candice? Thank you. It's such a blessing. Woo-woo. We love you so much. It was such an on-time word. So rich. So rich. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Well, don't forget, you got your puzzle piece, right? I love little things like that because it's just such a reminder. We have to have those reminders. Um, so hold on to that. And like she said, don't just hold on to it, but use that as an opportunity to do what? Use your voice to speak what God says over you, over your friends. That can even be a reminder for someone else, you know, that you know a friend or a relative going through a hard time. Thank you, Lord. A reminder of their purpose and their call and using your voice to pray that over them, right? Amen. Okay, well, we'll dismiss you here. Um, Just one reminder, we have our Flourish Christmas coming up. I know, it's crazy to think of Christmas, but it is just around the corner. It's crazy. So December 11th, it's a Saturday, another Saturday we'll be doing that. We'll get out more details to you. But I know the holidays get busy, so we wanted to go ahead and let you know that date. So December 11th, invite your friends. We'll have something here. Really, really fun. We're planning it. It's going to be awesome. Okay, thank you all so much. We love you. Have a great Saturday, and we'll see you tomorrow. Love you all. Oh, yeah, merchandise will be available, too, if you didn't get a chance to look at that.